Hi everyone, welcome to our 17th module of Verilog HDL Crash Course. And in this module, we are going to cover Verilog based test bench design. So we are going to take one example of Verilog HDL and we are going to write the Verilog based test bench to simulate this particular design. And here we also cover both asynchronous test bench and synchronous test bench and we will see when can we use asynchronous test bench and when can we use synchronous test bench so let's get started so a test bench basically supplies the signals and dumps the output to simulate a very low design it invokes the design under test which is nothing but a DUT we basically call it as a DUT and generates the simulation input vectors and implements the system task to view format the results of the simulation. So basically we design the test means using inbuilt Verilog system task and logic and then we will basically see the results from the design and it is never synthesized so it can use all Verilog commands. So basically the test benches are never going to be synthesized so all the very low constructs whether they are synthesizable or not synthesizable they can be used in very low test bench. So now let's see one example here. So this is a Mure type of FSM. First we are basically going to cover the functionality of this FSM and then we are going to write the very low HDL code and then we will write the test bench to simulate this design. So here if you can see on start or on reset assertion we are always in state 0. So as long as our start is 0 or reset is asserted we are in state 0 and as soon as start becomes 1 we will go into state 1 and from state 1 in the next block cycles without any dependency we will go to state 2. From state 2 depending on the skip 3 signal we can enter into state 0 or in state 3. So if our skip 3 is 1 we will skip the state 3 and we will directly go to state 0 else we will go into state 3. Now in state 3 depending on the another variable which is weight 3 we will be either in the state 3 itself or we will go to state 0. So as long as our weight 3 signal is 1 we will be in the state 3 itself otherwise we will go into state 0. Now what will be the output from this FSM? So the output from this FSM is a 3 bit value and when we are in state 0 the output will be 3 tick B 0 0 0 when we are in state 1 the output is going to be 3 tick B 1 0 1 and when we are in state 2 our output will be 3 tick B 1 1 1 else in state 3 our output is going to be 3 tick B 0 0 1 so this is a Mure type of FSM now let's see the very low HDL coding of this FSM so here basically we are going to follow the standard FSM design methodology where we are going to use three procedural blocks to code the next state logic, the present state logic and the output logic. So now let's see the Verilog HDL code. So here we have our module and these are the input output ports of this module. Here the input ports are clock, reset, start, skip 3 and wait 3 and we have a 3 bit output which is Z. So here we are declaring Z as a register type of variable because we are going to code the output logic using procedural block. So in procedural block we can only use the register type of variables in the left hand side of the assignment. So here to define the states we are using the parameters. So our state 0 is nothing but equivalent to 0. Our state 1 is defined as 1. State 2 is defined with a decimal value 2 and state 3 is defined with a decimal value 3. Now we have declared two register type internal variables which are state and the next state which are 2 bit and which basically represents one of the four states. So to represent the four states we need at least 2 bit variable. Now let's see the next state logic. So, so the next state logic here we are coding using the procedural block. So always at present state or start or skip or wait signal. So basically here depending on the present state or the input signals we will be one in one of the states. So if our present state is state 0 then depending on the start signals we will be either in state 1 or state 0. So if our start signal becomes 1 we will be in the state 1 else we are going to be in state 0. Now in state 1 without any dependency we are going into state 2. If we are in the state 2 then depending on the skip 3 signals we will be either in state 0 or in state 3. So if skip 3 signal is high we will basically skip the state 3 and we will directly go to state 0 else we will be go to state 3. 
Now in state 3, depending on the weight 3 signal, if weight 3 is high, we are going to wait in the state 3 itself, else we are going to state 0. Now our default state is going to be state 0 and default is optional here because all the four scenarios are covered here but it is good practice to use the default statement. Now let's see the present state logic. So again the present state logic we are coding using the procedural block. So always at positive edge block or positive edge reset if reset is as a state our present state is going to be state 0 else our present state will be next state. Now this is our output logic when depending on the present state our output will be one of these values. So if our state is present state is state 0 the output is going to be this else in state 1 the output will be this else in state 2 our output will be this and in state 3 our output is going to be this and default our, our output is going to be 0 0 which. So this is the very long SDL coding for this particular state machine. Now let's see how we can design the test base to simulate this particular design. So here in the first line we have to basically set our time scale first. So here the time scale is 1 nanosecond by 100 picosecond. That means our time unit is 1 nanosecond and our precision is 100 picosecond or this is nothing but 0.1 nanosecond. Now here we have our module test bench my fsm underscore tb and here basically whatever ports are there in our design so all the input ports from our design will become register type variables in our test bench and all the output ports in our design will become basically y type of variables in our test bench just remember this then here we are basically instantiating our duty so this is my fsm this is our design name and this is instantiation name and this is the ports so here we are basically instantiating using the position method of module instantiation and then here we are basically setting the initial values for the few of the signals. So if you see in starting our clock is 0, our reset is also 0. So after 1 nanosecond our reset will be 1. Then after 200 nanosecond that means at the instance of 201 nanosecond our reset will become 0 and here we have always at 50 nanoseconds our clock will become not of the clock that means every 50 nanosecond our clock is going to toggle that means the frequency of our clock or the period of our clock here is going to be 100 nanosecond that is nothing but 10 megahertz so here we are basically going to generate a 10 megahertz clock now let's see so basically here we are generating one stimuli for the design. So now to cover the different scenarios in our designs, we can generate the different different stimuli in our design. So here basically this is one of the scenario where in the starting we are making our skip 3 is equal to 0 and weight 3 is also 0. And then after 1 nanosecond we are, this is just basically a 1 nanosecond delay and then after 600 nanosecond our skip 3 is going to become 1. That means the time at which skip 3 will become 1 is nothing but 601 nanosecond. And then after another 400 nanoseconds our weight 3 will be will become 1. That means at 1000 and 1 nanosecond our weight 3 is going to be 1. And then our skip 3 will become 0 and after that with another 400 nanosecond delay our skip 3 is going to be 1. And then depending on the output value. So here we are basically going to wait until z becomes 1. So when z the value of z becomes a non-zero our skip 3 will become 0. And then basically we are generating a random variable which is going to the weight 3 variable and after that we are stopping the simulation. So this stimuli is basically depending on which portion of our design we want to cover. So this can be depending on the designer or verification engineer this can be different and it totally depends on what we want to target what we want to simulate from our design which functionality basically we want to simulate. So this is how we can basically code the test bench to simulate a particular design. So one thing to remember here is this is a asynchronous test bench because here we are changing the variables at any random value. We are not taking care of clock edge here while changing the variable values. That means if we do not change the variables with respect to the clock edge and we just based on some delay values we change the variables this kind of test benches are nothing but a synchronous test bench. Now let's see few things about synchronous test bench. So in synchronous designs one changes the data during certain clock cycles. 
So if our design is synchronous design, that means the data change happens only at the clock edges. So in our previous test bench, which was basically asynchronous test bench, if we have to make sure that our data changes in a particular clock cycle, we have to basically keep counting the delays and based on that, we can basically not 100% sure, but we can basically figure out that, okay, what delay we should put so that our data comes or our data ch data change happens in that particular clock cycles. So unlike that, in synchronous test means this can be done very easily. So with a synchronous test means we can store the data in a vector or in array and those can be injected to the designs at every clock cycles. Synchronous test benches are essential for cycle based simulation very important point. If we want a cycle based simulations, we should always go for synchronous test benches which do not use any delays smoother than a clock cycle. Now let's see one example of synchronous test bench. So here we are just covering how a synchronous test bench looks like. So if you see here we have a test bench module which is nothing but sync test bench and here there is two register type variables and we have one wire variable and here we also have declared one integer variable. So this is our duty instantiation, this is our top module, then this is the instantiation name and these are the ports. Now in starting we are assigning few values to the data variable. So this is the starting values assigned to the data variable and our integer variable is also 1. Here our tux value is 0 and clock is also 0 in the starting and at every 5 let's assume the time scale is 1 nanosecond. So at every 5 nanoseconds our clock is going to toggle. That means our clock period here is going to become 10 nanosecond. And any statements placed after forever will be never be missed. So we should not put any statements which we want to execute after the forever statement. Now send a new value of tux every third clock cycles. Okay. So our test means we are covering a particular scenario where we want to send a new X value at every third clock cycle. So how we can write the test means for this? So here you can see that this is our procedural always block. So here at positive edge clock, this means at the first positive edge of the clock, we are checking if i equal to 9, we are going to finish our simulation. If i not is equal to 9, we are going to check the second positive edge clock. Now at the, this suppose in starting here we are at the first here we are at the, at the second positive edge of the clock. Here we are not going to do anything. Now in the next statement we are going at the third positive edge of the clock. So at third positive edge of the clock after giving some delay we are giving a new value to the x. Okay. Now, now we are going to check the next negative edge clock. That means let's assume that this is our clock. So this is our first clock positive edge of the clock, this is our second positive edge of the clock, this is our third positive edge of the clock. So at this positive edge of the clock, we have assigned a new value to the x. Now we are giving some time here for the DUT to process the data and here in the negative edge of the clock, what we are doing is our x is not equal to y. We are basically displaying some messages and we are going to increment our i variable with one value. So here if you notice we are changing the variable values with respect to the clock edge. So these kind of test benches are nothing but synchronous test bench. Again this is just a small example of how the synchronous test bench looks like. We can definitely cover or we can definitely take an example of a particular design and we can write the test bench for that particular design. So guys, hope both type of test bench designs, synchronous test bench and asynchronous test bench are clear to you. If you have any doubts, please write down in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you very much.